Hello and welcome to Nitro Talk. Uh, welcome to the uh, I Have My 100th Episode Special coming up very soon special uh, where uh, we are going to discuss my upcoming 100th uh, episode special. I'm at, I believe, 93, 92 or 93 videos on my channel. And uh, I am planning a uh, blowout video for my 100th uh, video. So uh, today, uh, please like and subscribe uh, if you're into uh, Nitro, the Nitro aspect of the RC hobby, everything related to it we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about uh, something uh, pretty rare today, a lot of rare stuff on this channel. Anyways, um, keep watching. We're going to hit 100 and we are going to keep on going. Um, I have not, I have barely broken the surface um, of the stuff that I'm going to show you. All right, so before we get into, I got, I got a few things to touch on today. Let me go ahead and get this out of the way. I've been trying to make my clutch video and I just cannot get it done. Um, it just ends up being like over an hour long. There's just too much to talk about with clutches. Uh, I went to my, uh, st uh, my stash of new and packaged parts and just went through and grabbed, uh, just random clutch stuff, uh, uh, sliding clutch flywheels, uh, full clutch kits, clutch shoes, uh, shoes for the works, clutch, got a full M2C, a variable weight clutch kit right here, the EK4 clutch, which is insane, um, and that's the liner for the EK4 clutch. Uh, but, you know, there's, there's that. And then just all the different clutches throughout the years. The Orion CRF V6 clutch. Like I said, you know, the Works clutch. All of your different sliding clutches of various types. That's, I think that's the XTM sliding clutch. Uh, the fact that we pretty much landed on the low C4 shoe style as the standard uh, eight scale off-road buggy clutch. Uh, your little two shoe uh, clutches, wraparound spring versus uh, centrally sprung. That's the monster EK4 clutch right there. Uh, low C shoes, the, the cost of them, these things are like, Freaking four, 30, 40 bucks a set. Uh, flywheels, steel versus aluminum. I mean, I, it could go on for days. Uh, I, I just do not know how to make a clutch video that's less than like a freaking hour long. Uh, it just goes and goes and goes. So I, I, I'm going to give it another try uh, one of these days. Um, but the clutch... And I'm, and I'm, I am a clutch, I don't know if you could tell, uh, but I am a clutch connoisseur, uh, have been into clutches since I've been into nitro engines, like, uh, especially, uh, into clutches. And, uh, I want to touch upon how clutches affect your tuning, how long I fought a low end bog that I thought I could fix with a screwdriver that all I needed was some stronger springs on my clutch. The, oh man, uh, clutches. I will try to get a clutch video done. I promise. Uh, I will at some point get a clutch video done and I will try to make it under an hour. I will do my best. All right. So, let's move on from that. We, we touched upon the clutches. Uh, I, I, yeah, all right. 
Let's, let me get these out of the way. All right, so the upcoming 100th episode special. I have a couple ideas uh, for what I want to do uh, on that special. So let me go ahead and lay out a couple things for you. Oh, first of all, let me say thank you very much uh, to the YouTube community. Uh, I, and I've, I've said this a couple times, uh, but... You know, I kind of have been, you know, I've, I've been doing this Nitro stuff. I think you can tell I've been doing it for quite a long time. Uh, and, you know, i kind of just been researching and reading and, you know, tinkering with the stuff for, for a long, long time. Uh, and, you know, I got friends at the track, uh, you know. I've tried to turn on buddies in my life, you know, to, you know, Nitro Hobby. I've gotten a couple friends hooked on Nitro throughout the years. Uh, but just having, uh, I've never been a big social media person. So having joined the uh, the Nitro groups and having now the point where I'm getting a lot of comments on my videos, I really enjoy the discussion. I enjoy that's why I named this channel Nitro Talk, because I could just rap about this stuff forever. Uh, and I really enjoy uh, now having some interaction with fellow Nitro enthusiasts. So please keep the comments coming. I try to respond to as many as I can. And I remembered another thing. Uh, when I first, this is speaking of, uh, you know, the 100th video coming up. When I first started doing videos, uh, I wanted to play this game in my videos where I would show you a part, right? And you would have to identify said part. I did this in a couple of my early videos, got no responses, right? But at the same time, I wasn't getting any responses at all uh, when I first started on YouTube. Uh, so now that I have a little bit of a community, y'all are my community. Look at that. I, I can't believe that. That's cool. Awesome. Uh, now that I got a little bit of a community, I want to, uh, again, start up my name that part. This is a cooling head, and I'm going to start y'all off with a easy, this is a easy as pie one. Uh, a lot of y'all should instantly say, oh, boom, I know exactly what that is. So. Uh, the first person who can get to the comments and identify this cooling head is the winner. Don't you want to be the winner? So, uh, let's go ahead. Boom. That's an easy one. Come on. Come on. That is easy. We know what that is. All right. What is that cooling head? Say it down below in the comments. All right. And we're going to keep playing this. Someone please play my little game with me and, and say say what this is. And we're going to start doing that again in videos. At the end of videos, I'm going to have a part. Could be an engine. Could be... Oh, I caught it. Uh, could be anything. Um, but we're going to identify it. All right, moving on. Uh, I was reading... Imagine that. Reading my... Uh, what is this? Night radio control nitro, like I love doing. And I see the old uh, No Rossi kangaroo here. All right. Uh, new stuff at the Winter Nats. Uh, they talk about this engine, but what they don't talk about is what's on the engine. Has anyone noticed it yet? What is... Okay. Not the air filter. That's a Trinity, I believe. Trinity made those... Uh, air filters like that. I never really liked them. The foam is like glued onto the base there. It's like a one piece pretty much disposable. I mean, I guess you could wash it and re-oil it. But anyway, I never really liked those filters. What is that? That little purple thing on the engine right there. Come on, my fellow uh, nitro enthusiasts. What is that? I saw that, and I'm like, I know what that is. And, you know, of course, I got to share. This channel is all about sharing my collection with you guys. So, I see that, and I'm like, that's an opportunity to show. I, I guarantee a lot 
of my viewers had no idea that what those things are existed. So, for those of you who don't know, what are those? Those are Mugen Seiki head protectors in purple. Uh, these, now, how many are supposed to be in here? I believe I, I took some of these out before. It's been, and I tell you what, it took me a freaking hour <laughs> to find these things. I knew, I thought for sure that I had them, right? But after looking for like a half hour, I'm like, maybe I just saw them in a magazine one time and I didn't really have them. Uh, but I thought that I did. So I kept looking and yes, uh, I do have the Mugen Seiki head protectors. Now, how many are in here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, you know, I believe, yeah, I think I opened it up and I tried them on a couple engines. I don't believe they fit really good. I mean, I, uh, now I'm seeing what kind of engine that they probably go on. Um, I'm sure now, uh, I could find an engine that they fit on perfectly, but I think I tried putting these on an engine or two and they either didn't fit really good or you know what the other thing is, and am I insane, but so these are Mugen Seiki head protectors. These are vintage. These are probably, you know, I haven't looked, uh, pulled up eBay, maybe, Maybe you can buy this pack on eBay right now really cheap. There's a bunch of them. I'm not positive. I haven't looked. Uh, either they are or they aren't. But here's the thing. These are head protectors, all right? But because they are a vintage nitro item, I don't want to get these things scratched up either. I don't want to put these on a head, right? And have it flip and damage these things. Damage the protectors, that just like, uh, you know, the Traxxas 2.5 has the RPM uh, head protector that goes on it, right? I don't like using those. Uh, the couple of those I have, I like keeping those in good condition. I don't like getting those scratched up. So, I don't know. It's kind of uh, nuts to want to preserve your preservers. Uh, but that is a vintage nitro item right there that I'm sure a lot of people didn't know existed. So there they are, the Mugen Seiki B0426 head protector purple for 15 or 21 engines. Boom, there you go. All right, so we had to do, we had to have a main uh, topic for today's video. This is the uh, I have my 100th episode special upcoming special. So we're talking about that, but we have to at least look at something. So what we are going to look at today, and we're going to kind of discuss uh, the 100th episode upcoming special while we're doing it. Uh, today's episode, we are going to look at this. Nitro TC3 chassis. All right. I know some of you already are like, ooh, there's some nice stuff on there. All right. But before we get into that, again, we're talking about this upcoming 100th episode special. Now, here is another idea. Or here's the two big ideas I have for the special. I want to do one of two things, okay? I'm either going to break the seal on one of the um one of the rarest and coolest engines uh that there are uh the very very rare very hard to find and very insanely lightened uh the thing i can't get over how this look how lightened that cooling head is look the number of holes drilled in it and they go all the way up to the second to last fin and it even is lightened down there on the crankcase that is the force pro 21 
I got a, the uh, seal it kind of had like a little hole in it. Uh, so I put a piece of, I put a desiccant packet in there and then sealed it up with a piece of tape. Uh, keep it nice and dry in there. Red aluminum pinch bolt in there. Uh, these Force Pro 21s are, uh, you know, they're actually somewhat, not, not common at all, but more common uh, overseas than they are here in America. Uh, very few of these uh, in America. If you want to buy one, uh, you have to get them from overseas. Uh, and they're not too hard, not too easy to come by. Anyways, uh, for my 100th episode special, I'm either going to break the seal on the Force Pro 21, which I've wanted to do forever, but I've also not wanted to do because it's still factory sealed, right? I want to keep it factory sealed. I'm either going to bust open the Force Pro 21 or I'm going to do my Todd Max video. So I have this box um, with three T Max chassis in it. Did I discuss this on another video? I may have. Sorry if I did. I'm starting to think maybe I did now. If it was a video I uploaded or not, that's the question. But uh, so I have this box with three T Max chassis. And uh, I want to make a T-Max using only parts in the box and parts I have on hand. I can't order anything, right? I have to use only stuff I have on hand, which I got plenty of stuff to build a T-Max or two. Uh, so that shouldn't be a problem. But it's the Todd Max. It's going to be my uh, T-Max kind of set up my way with the, uh, you know, with all the stuff I choose uh, to build it. So basically, so that for my 100th episode, I'm either going to go through that box of those three, and we're going to look at those three T-Max chassis, okay? That's going to be the, uh, like the beginning of the Todd Max um, video series. We'll be going through the box and looking at those chassis, okay? So for my 100th episode special, would you like to either bust open and take a look at the Force Pro or see those three uh, T-Max chassis, uh, which are not stock. I'm, I believe there's some decent aftermarket parts on at least one or two of them. All right, so we got that out of the way. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this, which is a, a Team Associated Nitro TC3 chassis. And for those of you in the know, uh, it is outfitted with some hardcore racing uh, titanium parts. Now, let's pause for a second. And uh, so, as far as aftermarket parts go, you had a wide range, all right, uh, if you wanted aftermarket parts let's say you wanted some aluminum a arms okay for whatever vehicle you were running let's say a savage you could get the cheapest aluminum a arms you could find or you could get some more expensive aluminum a arms they different companies uh made aftermarket parts for these vehicles and they were of varying quality uh varying price uh you could you know, get away cheap as possible, or you could spend uh, the good money. These hardcore racing titanium parts are of that upper, uh, higher caliber. Uh, they were absolutely not cheap. Uh, they were of very high quality, okay, and uh, are, are amongst uh, the best. Uh, of the aftermarket parts produced were the uh, hardcore racing titanium parts. Very, very good quality, uh, well-respected uh, parts. So let's go through the hardcore racing titanium parts on this car, starting with the chassis. Now, I don't know if it's just uh, the fact of how uh, hard the titanium is, but it looks like it's got 
some scratches, but none of them are gouges. It's, it's, this thing is still really smooth. Um, it's almost like uh, when it scratched, the scratches couldn't get deep into uh, the metal. It just kind of rode over them. This has been used, uh, but uh, there's no uh, places where someone had to... Uh, a lot of times when you look at these old chassis, um, they'll have a place where someone had to slot a screw and you'll see the, the cut marks on it. Uh, this chassis, although used, is in very good condition. Uh, it's uh, nice and straight, no bend to it, uh, no damage to the engine mount setup at all. Uh, just a very good condition used chassis. And you have a lot of the green uh, gone. You don't see a whole lot of the green left on the bottom, uh, but the top there uh still has a good green glow to it all right so that's the chassis and then you have uh these upper braces here front and rear uh, i always thought these were really unique uh the way that uh they're just a couple lines and you could with metal that's really strong you can uh, make it really thin like that uh, and these are still really strong, uh, even though they are super thin. Uh, we also have, uh, is that the bearing carrier in there? Um, a block of some sort in there. Uh, and then you got the hinge pin holder there uh, in the rear, that one. Sadly, it has a little neck on it. I just saw that. That's not cool. Don't like that. Uh, and did I see one other thing on here somewhere? The chassis, the block, uh, the two blocks, the hinge pin block and the bearing carrier in the middle there, and those two braces. I think that is all the uh, hardcore titanium parts. Uh, and then you have a uh, graphite uh, carbon fiber radio tray in here. A little bit dusty. Uh, this stuff does sit around for years. Um, original uh, radio box there. But so carbon fiber uh, chassis uh, radio tray. Carbon fiber radio tray. Uh, I went over the hardcore titanium parts. Uh, this has uh, CVDs or universals in it. Uh, looks like the factory team blue ones. Um, now I will touch upon, it's got those uh, all the way around the factory team universals. And looks like it's got some, I'm not sure what company made these uh, aluminum standoffs there front and rear um, and oh yeah of course the center uh, feels like a lightweight hollow uh, center shaft uh, it is a one speed uh, looks like a stock uh, brake disc um, got some RPM uh, ball cups here and actually those I just noticed those uh, turnbuckles there almost look like they may be some titanium pieces also. Uh, those turnbuckles in there with all RPM ball cups. So, all right, we've kind of went over all the parts that make up this car. Now we can go ahead and discuss the car itself. Uh, yeah, it does not look like a Nitro TC3, does it? Um, so... Whatever the person who built this was going for, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know if this had an engine on it when I got it. Uh, but this right here, I got exactly like this. Uh, and have had this for many years. Uh, I know that these are some really nice parts. Uh, so you know, probably someday if I ever did uh, a Nitro TC3 up really nice, uh, I was probably going to use those. But... Uh, you can see that's not a uh, standard 
Nitro TC3 bumper looks more kind of like a pan car uh, custom made bumper, just a piece of plexiglass or something that uh, someone bolted to the standard front bumper mount right there. And these tires are uh, larger than a, a standard 10th scale. I believe these are 8th scale on-road wheels uh, is what these are, wheels and tires. Uh, they are larger than a, a standard 10th scale wheel. There are no shocks on this car. Um, these aluminum standoffs back here, I'm not sure what those are. Okay, yeah, the shock goes right on there. Those are kind of cool. Um, some cool parts on this chassis for sure. Uh, those hardcore titanium parts are, are very uh, well respected. Um, the green is, uh, I'm, I'm sure, one of the harder colors to find. It's kind of a mixed bag. It's also, you know, people want the purple probably most, the red, the blue. The green's probably one of the lower. Uh, they sold the least amount, so it's rarer nowadays, but because people didn't really want it back then, you know what I mean? They didn't buy a lot of uh, green stuff. Um, yeah, a unique uh, project that someone was building at some point. Uh, I could kind of see what they're going for. They probably, uh, judging from the size of the, the tires, they, they might have had a big block in here. It certainly could handle it. Um, and pro I guess they might have made a, a speed run car uh, out of this, what they were, were going for. Uh, the suspension, um, they got a couple bearings in there. They, they have it as widened as they can. Uh, all the uh, pillow balls are stretched all the way out. Um, they just kind of tried to blow it up into eighth scale was kind of what it looks like they were, they were going for, but, um, some super cool parts and just like everything else in my collection, something that I love, uh, to have and, and look at on the shelf, uh, somebody's, uh, I'm sure they spent a good amount of money at, at one point, uh, putting together this, uh, associated Nitro TC3 project car all right so we got a look at that we talked about our upcoming um hundredth video special um coming up we did uh some identify that cooling head i gave you an easy one for the first for the startup restart of the uh, name that part game we talked about clutches we got a lot done today uh, thank you very much for watching. More, plenty, plenty more to come. Uh, tons more cars, engines, uh, parts, uh, cool things. Where's my little, uh, where'd I put my uh, head protectors? Cool, cool nitro stuff. That's what we're here for. See you next time. Thank you very much.